This August I was accepted onto a snorkeling artist residency. I can't really think of anything much better than a project that blends art and water together. Joined by eight other artists, we had an intensive four days in the water and on the shore. Snorkeling, filming, drawing, discussing, sharing, eating, walking. It's one of the most meaningful group experiences I've had in my life, and I've never felt more connected to Scotland's seas and coasts than I do now, knowing more of what's below the surface. I'm making this video as a part of a short series to document the frankly life-affirming experience and wanted to share with you what it has meant, what I've learned, and how I'm hoping to bring my learning into my artistic practice moving forwards. If you're new here, hello, my name is Orla and I'm a Scottish artist, illustrator and designer, making work and films to connect people to creativity and nature, often in bringing my art outside. If this kind of thing sounds up your street, consider subscribing to a follow along with this mini series or hit the like button to let me know if you've enjoyed. To tell you the story of how this experience came to be, let's start at the beginning. I applied for this residency immediately after coming back from a diving trip in Greece. It was my first time scuba diving and I fell in love with it instantly. I'm not into adrenaline field activities really, but found scuba to be the perfect level of adventure for me. Somehow the water immersion felt like home, something to do with the breathing, the physicality, the colours and the movement. Akin to being up a hill, there's nothing that brings forwards the scale of a personal importance when you're put in the biggest body of water in the world. Anyhow, I'd shared a photo of me and my partner diving, and a friend promptly sent me the application form to this snorkeling residency. And before I knew it, I was accepted on and heading north. Another marker of what's for you won't pass you by. The residency was hosted by the Argyle Hope Spot, a group committed to protecting and voicing the importance of marine conservation, located roughly along the Argyle coast, found along Scotland's west coastline. It's the UK mainland's only Mission Blue Hope Spot, a very special stretch and marine protected area. To quote from their website, collectively, Hope Spots can help to protect and restore marine biodiversity on a local, regional, national and international scale. The purpose of the residency is to share the Hope Spot community's knowledge and love of this really special environment in the hope that each artist takes it forward into our own individual practices. Art is a brilliant tool for non-verbal communication, able to communicate how places feel, their emotional importance, as well as the physical, cultural, environmental and scientific. The aim following on from the residency experience is to create work that shares the wealth of diversity and rich ecosystems worth protecting. People cannot care if they do not know, and we're less likely to be motivated to protect if we haven't experienced or at least seen the world that we are part of. So now that I've covered some of the backstory, I wanted to introduce you to the brilliant team that we spent the week with. We were led on all things water, snorkeling and safety by swim and snorkel coach called Dan the Merman and obsessive swimmer and artist Lottie Goodlett. These are her words, not mine. So Dan runs a water-based experiences business in and around Argyle. So if you are in the area and lucky enough to be in his neck of the woods, do check out his website to join on one of his experiences. And Lottie makes the most beautiful seaweed pressings, capturing the colour and form of the underwater worlds in a stillness, allowing you to really see just how magnificent and varied these plants are. Back on land, the residency was led by artists Louise Scammell and Jane Smith. Both artists are fountains of knowledge when it comes to all things print and led us through various observational drawing and jelly plate printing techniques. Their teaching was focused on play and drawing to learn to see more, two things I'm deeply passionate about in my own practice. It felt such a luxury to be on the receiving end of tuition and so good to make for the fun of it for no aim at the time in mind. I'll pop links to all of the tutors, fellow artists and residents websites below so that you can check out their work as well as the links to the Argyle Hope Spot and Mission Blue. This has been my first outdoor focused residency, outside of self-initiated research trips, and I was kind of nervous about spending so much time in the water. 
Although I swim regularly outside, I knew that it would be a little different to immersing twice to three times a day and to top it off, I have the worst circulation in my hands and my feet. If you'd like to try snorkeling it for yourself, I'll share the water kit I bought along for the colder temperatures. As a wee disclaimer, it's probably a good idea to find someone who knows the water well to take you out on your first few trips if you've not done it before. It's really important to understand the water, the tides, the safety and so on. And I certainly felt way more at ease having Dan and all of the other artists in the water there with me. To prepare, I took along my winter wetsuit, gloves, boots and tried out a hood for the first time. This addition was a total game changer, seeing as I'd had my head in the water much longer and more than usual. The second game changer was the addition of a dry robe. The moment I put it on, I felt like I'd been accepted into some kind of tribe. To me, in Scotland at least, the dry robe is a symbol of outdoor swimming community and some might say a trend. But I've got to say, I can totally see why these are so popular now. I lived in mine during the week and it's made the whole wriggling out and back into wet wetsuits 10 times more enjoyable. And the last piece of kit was a swim float and of course my snorkel. And I'll pop links down below to help you out if you're interested in knowing what to get. The first day was spent getting to know one another, getting comfortable in the water, covering basic snorkel skills and very excitingly drawing underwater. In the morning, we learnt breathing techniques to keep us relaxed in the water, which set the tone for a very calm week and really helped to be present for the trip. I honestly think it was this that helped me to keep my body temperature so regulated and not to lose my fingers and toes to the cold. Our first day snorkeling was focused in and around the pier close to where we were staying, letting us get used to the kit and the water. I know what I'm about to say is totally ridiculous, but what struck me was just how close to the shoreline so much life lives. Of course, I know in theory that the sea is home to so many creatures. I'm sure most of these we will never know or meet. I just hadn't appreciated just how awesome and varied life, even just 10 centimetres below the water surface and growing on piers is. It is so deceptive when looking at that flat, black, glossy, calm of the sea's surface that there's a technicolour, textured world living and growing right below that divide. Immediately, I got that same sense of awe and humbling that I felt when diving, but this time, minus the whole ton of kit scuba requires. It's pretty liberating, to be honest, being in the water in such simple equipment and being able to witness so much so close to the shore. Our second dip of the day took us around the pier on an observational drawing exercise, drawing underwater. Now, before you get any fancy ideas of fine art masterpieces being created under the waves, I'd like to bring you back to something I mentioned earlier in this video, that that idea of using drawing as a way to see more. The drawing we were doing wasn't really about the end result at all, more a way to focus attention on one strand of seaweed or a sea squirt that we were looking at and understand how it moves, its colour, its shape. Kind of how you might use meditation to understand how you're feeling. The drawing helps lodge it in your mind's eye to take away and develop afterwards. Nonetheless, it was such an exciting process to take our pages and our tools under the waves to scribble away to my heart's content. It really felt like the most adventurous plein air drawing I've ever done. On my journey to Argyle, I was accompanied by a beautiful audiobook called Ebb and Flow. It's written by Eski Britton, who's a scientist, social activist and surfer. In case you're also a fellow sea lover, I couldn't recommend this book more. It is a lovely balance of holistic and scientific perspectives on our relationships with water and dotted through with exercises that you can do to explore your own connections with water. If you are interested in swimming in open bodies of water yourself, I'd love to share with you a design from my latest collection of t-shirts. Each design has been inspired by my most recent paintings, celebrating my love for nature and the outdoors. This one is called Night Swimmer and is printed in the UK onto 100% organic cotton. 
and is now available on my website store alongside other designs and available to ship worldwide. And you'll find this over at www.orlastevens.com. This first day flew by in a blur of sensory overload. So many colours, conversations, animal and plant names I'd never heard of before, plus the physical adjustment of learning to float, to keep still, and to be honest, just see it and take it all in. I finished up the day in my tent, tuning into Iski's book, listening to the sounds of owls and the nearby river, and writing some thoughts in my sketchbook before turning in for the night. Join my next video in this series, where I'll be sharing more about this week-long snorkelling artist residency, going into my experiences in the water, what we got up to creatively, and how I'll be bringing this forward into my paintings in the future. If you'd like to stay in the loop about upcoming videos, workshops, events, and exhibitions, as well as have early access to any new products and original painting collections, you can sign up to my newsletter over on my website. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you outside.